Psalm 109. It's a complaint and appeal to God for our enemies. It's also a psalm about Judas Iscariot. To the chief musician, it's a psalm. A psalm of David. David's a prophet. David's a king. David was allowed into the priest's office. Jesus said that David was allowed to eat the bread that was not for him to eat. And yet the Lord didn't strike him down. Hold not thy peace, O God, of my praise. God, this is not the time of peace. It's time of war with my enemy. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful. So there's two people, deceit and wicked. Yeah, that's going to be the Antichrist. Are open against me. David's a type of Jesus Christ. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. David and Jesus and the children of Israel. David's a type of David. David's a type of Jesus Christ. And David's a type of Israel. They, the wicked, in the mouth of the deceitful, compass, that means encircle, me about also with words of hatred. No, we wouldn't have the words of hatred. No. We're to love everybody. And Jesus said, Marvel, Jesus said, know that the world hated me first. Saul hated David. The world hates Israel. And fought against me without cause. What did David do to Saul? Nothing. What did Jesus do to the people? Help them. Pray for them. He didn't do anything wrong. I find no fault in him. What is Israel going to do? Nothing. It does nothing that miss. Verse 4 and 5, you see Jesus. For my love, they are my adversary. So the world needs more love. And the love that Jesus gave, gave Jesus more enemies. David had a love for Saul in the position that David had opportunity at least twice to kill Saul. In the fear of God, he didn't. But I gave myself unto prayer, and Jesus is always praying. In the garden he prayed. They have rewarded me evil for good. David got less what expected for him. And yet David didn't get all that expected to a sinner. Jesus Christ for his help and for his love and for his care and for his prayers and for the truth of God got Calvary's cross. And hatred for my love. You know you're gonna you know what's gonna happen when you preach the truth and preach Jesus? They're gonna hate you. Marvel not, my brethren, the world hates you. You say, well, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord and I can get a world along with the world. The world hates you is what the Bible says. They hate you. If they're not saved, they hate you. They hated Jesus. And if the world don't hate you, then you're doing something wrong. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now we're going to get into Judas. Set thou a wicked man over him. Let Satan stand at his right hand. Whoa. You know, there was a couple times that Paul himself has turned somebody over to Satan. Satan entered into Judas. The night of the Last Supper. When he shall be judged, 
and him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. David's prayer and song here is absolutely no mercy. And the man of the subject that David doesn't know about is for the enemies of David, the enemies of Jesus, the enemy of Israel. It's the Antichrist. And some seem to think, and I've heard it, and yeah, almost. The Antichrist may be Judas. Let his prayer become sin. There are sometimes people pray to God because you know what? Whether they believe God or not, they're in trouble. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. Jeremiah was told by God, don't pray for them. I ain't going to listen. There's a point that's, that you can get so offensive to God. God's like, that. No. Nope. The man that's in the cage with the Pilgrim's Progress. The man that couldn't get out of the bed. I just, I'm going too far. Pilgrim was like, just pray. I, I can't. Now, I've never met anybody like that. I don't want to be like that. Can a Christian be that bad? Yeah. Let, looking at Judas again, let his days be few. Now, we don't know how old Judas was. But we're going to assume that, you know, they were young men. Jesus was in his 30 to 33 and a half years old. I would assume that Jesus would have picked people around his age, but I could be wrong. And let another take his office. Exodus, I mean, excuse me, Acts chapter 1. And the remaining disciples cast lots in Manassas. I forgot the other guy's name. Let his children be fatherless. There's a possibility if this is Judas. Judas had children. And his wife a widow. And if he was a father and a husband, when he went and committed suicide, they became a widow and they had no more father. And when Judas went to the chief priest and said, here's the money, you know, like, who cares? I would assume that the family of Judas would have been half and half. To the family of Judas who betrayed Jesus for the ones that hated Jesus, their family would probably have been praying. To, to the ones that loved Jesus and followed Jesus, his family would have been, unless they were repenting and got right, which there's no recording. And this prayer here is harsh. Let his children be continually, continually vagabonds. That was Cain. Cain became a vagabond for murdering his brother. Vagabond, you have no settling place. And beg. That's the first time the word beg shows up in the Bible. You know, we see beggars all around. What's the foundation of the word beg in the Bible? A man likened to Judas, if it's not Judas, his children. The source of the word beg are children of a wicked one. And there are many beggars out there today. You have to be careful because they're not really truly poor. If you find one that's truly poor, I'll help them out. I found some phony. Let them, the children, seek their bread. Also out of their desolate places. Judas went to his own place. 
Let them be where there's no population. Place is forsaken. I mean, I don't know if they had bridges back there, but, you know, it comes to mind, you know, under bridges, alleyways, places where people don't usually gather. Vagabond. Let the extortioner, that's the first time that word showed up, catch all that he has after he's dead. Let the bill collectors come. Let those that extortion and let the stranger spoil his labor. Of the widow and the, and the childless, the fatherless, excuse me. This prayer of David, it, 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 the enemy, the wicked, the, the, the deceitful, David's no mercy. And Judas went to the priest. He never went to Jesus. And he died and went to his own place. The devil entered into him. There was no hope for Judas. Because he went to the hopeless. The priest. And not to Jesus. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. That's the first time extending. You know, it shows up only in Isaiah 66. Looks like 12. I write terribly. Don't show mercy on the widow and the father. And the law states you're not to pass the sins on to the children. And yet Haman, in his wickedness against the Jews, he died on his own gallows and his ten sons died on the gallows too. Why? Because they allowed Haman to go about his wickedness. They knew of his house. His wife knew. He told them. And they suggested, hey man, why don't you build gallows? Achan, his entire family was stoned and burned. Why? They knew what Achan had done. The impression here is, if it is Judas... Don't you think that the Holy Spirit spoke to Pilate's wife saying, have nothing to do with this just man? Would you not have thought that the Holy Spirit had something to do with Judas's wife? If, he's, if this is about Judas? You tell me that he had no warning. And yet Jesus Christ said at the Last Supper, he that dippeth with me in the sock. And then Judas dips in with the sock. And no one else got that at the table. If Peter would have understood that what Jesus had said and what Judas would have done, Peter would have overcame Judas and killed him. Because Peter took out the ear of one of the servants in the garden. If there's one that would have understood what Jesus said, it would have been Judas before he put his hand in the sock. But I guess Judas had other things on his mind. 30. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. That's cold. That's, that's really cold. But the wicked, the deceitful, and in most cases, not all, and we see that with the kings of Judah, 
the general rule is as the father, so is the child. That's not a die hard rule. Because there's in Proverbs, you know, if you're chasing your, 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 your child, there's hope. And yet there's Christians out there who have children. They're hopeless. Not a die-hard rule. Let his prosperity, that's descendant, be cut off. And in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let me ask you a question. If this is not about Judas, let me ask you a question. How many children, how many people have you met in a lifetime named Judas? How many girls have you ever grew up in school or had friends or anything like that with uh, Jezebel? It is so wicked, Jezebel. It is so wicked of Judas. You don't hear their name. And there are just certain names that has happened of violence and they have a neary condemnation with them. But I don't see anybody I've ever met anybody named Judah. Now, somebody may have changed their name to be wicked and vile. I'm going to name my. But what loving mother, loving father would name their. How many children have you ever met in their lifetime after World War II named Hitler? Or how many children do you know? Well, that's the last thing. Adolf. I mean, Adolf Hitler, what do you think? Wicked is vile. And what Pilate did. How many children do you know named Pilate? What did he do? He turned an innocent man, the son of man, over to the hands of the, of the extortion, not ex, uh, executioners. And he had a crucified man crucified for no crime at all. That's wicked and vile. Let the iniquity of his father be remembered of the Lord. And Judas was of the father, John 8, 44. He of your father the devil. He was a murderer and a liar. And if Judas is the one that comes back in the tribulation period as the Antichrist, man, Judas will fit John 8, 44 perfectly. I'm not saying Judas is going to be, but hey, you look at the record. Jesus said, I come in my father's name, but he that cometh in his own name. Can you imagine one day Judas pops up, hey, I'm Judas. I, I tried to tell them that he wasn't the one, but you wouldn't listen to him. Here I am. I'll tell you what, look, I, I'm back from the dead. I died. I committed suicide. I'm back from the dead. Watch me die again and watch me be resurrected again. And if he's not going to be the Antichrist, he may be the false prophet. Judas went to Judas is part of one of the three of the unholy trinity. And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Goes upon his father and mother. Judas had a mother. He didn't parachute out of the solar system. Judas lived and breathed and ate and walked and had the same miracles and the same healing that the disciples and he had a mother. As with the wicked and the deceitful person here that Dave is talking about, the wicked, the deceitful, Dave is talking about one man. 
And David said, don't you dare have his mother to be innocent. Is there anybody you hate that much? I mean, there are people I dislike. There are people who I definitely don't want in my company. And there was a while there for years, I prayed that the Lord keep two people out of our life. I don't need to worry about that no more. But I pray for their souls. David said his mother, his father, his wife, his children. Is David hating this man? I don't think so. I think David's looking at the wickedness of that man. That it's beyond. It's like the angels. Can the angel that sinned against God and be part of the third of the angels go, can they repent? Can they be redeemed? No. And the family of this man follows suit. There's something to it. Let them, mother, father, children, widow, let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Wait a minute. This verse is, is weird. God, can I say damn them? Can I say that? All right. God, Damn them. I don't mean God. I mean God damn them. I'm not swearing. John chapter 3. Condemnation. God give them condemnation. But let them be before the Lord continually. God they're so wicked. They're so evil. They're so vile. But they let them be before you. Uh, uh, continually. Now who's that Lord? What we've read about the Jehovah Witnesses tonight. Jesus was not Judas continually with the Lord and maybe his wife and his children and his mother and fathers now I may be stretching that okay and if I am you can wrap that up and put it in the garbage but why would David say someone who's wicked following condemnation or god damning not cussing sounds like it be continually before the Lord. Maybe the ministry of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we've seen throughout the book of Psalms, we've seen it throughout the Old Testament, where we are now, that Lord is Jesus Christ. And there is a possibility that Judas and his family were there with the Lord Jesus and What would be another thing would be damn them for what they've done? Did not Jesus say about the unpardonable sin that he casts out the devils by the spirit of Beelzebub, the, the, the prince of the devils? That the work of the Holy Spirit was of the devil himself? And Jesus said that sin no man of God can ever forgive? It may be the family of Judas that spoke that too. I mean, Jesus knew Judas the whole time. Peter, James, John, Matthew, Thomas had no idea. They may be cut off the memory of them from, from the earth. When we get in New Jerusalem, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. We're not going to see Judas walk in the street of gold. We're not going to see him. He's going to be in the lake of fire that burns forever with the false prophet and the devil himself. Because that he, he, one man, he, 
remember not to show mercy. I'll take 30 pieces of silver. I'll turn them over to you. Pay up, guys. I'm up. He's in the garden. But persecuted the poor. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember the woman that broke the alabaster box? And one of the disciples complained that that should have been sold and given to the poor. That Bible says that that was Judas. He cared not for the poor because he was a thief and he held the bag. If this is Judas, he persecuted the poor. And people are going to love for me to say this, but he's your typical Democrat. All for the poor, and then you tax them like crazy. I mean, I'm not living in the cave somewhere. I know politics. So if this is Judas, that's the case. Oh, Jesus, you know, they could have sold that given to the poor. That was just words. He was angry. And even after that event, Judas went to the priest and said, what will you give me? That angered Judas so much. All right, I'll sell him out. Because a woman did good for him? You know what got Haman so angry? Mordecai would not bow down and worship him. That he might even slay the broken in heart. Now, do you know somebody who curses? I know a guy, he, he's, not, he's dead now. I'm going to say every third or fourth word, that guy would cuss. And he was Catholic. And he didn't go to church. And I would say every sentence, at least, had a cuss. The guy was filthy. He was a co-worker. I, I couldn't avoid it, but the guy was filthy. As he loved cursing. So let it come upon him. I believe that man died without Jesus Christ. And he's in the cursing place today. As he delighted not in blessing. So let it be far from him. As he closed himself with cursing. I said, I've known one man. I know a few others. Curse, 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 curse. That's all they do. Like as a garment. So let it come upon onto his bowels inside, like water, and like oil onto his bones. Are you a cusser? It's going to come back. And you're going to go, if you're lost, to a place of cussing and cursing, and there's nothing you're going to do about it. Now, if you're saved and you curse and cuss, it's going to be wood, hair, or stubble. And be careful. Because the Bible says we're going to get a new name. Can you imagine walking through heaven getting a new name? There's the cursor. There's the one that cussed. I wouldn't want that name. Let it be unto him as a garment which covereth him, enclosed, encircled with cussing, and for a girdle wherein he is girded continually. And a girdle is that that is close to your flesh. It touches your flesh. And when you are lost, and this is what the, it's talking about, lost man. And when you go into hell, you are just immersed in baptism of the fire of your own works. And your works are just cussing. Well, cussing is going to be what you're going to do in hell. And it ain't going to do you no purpose. Like it does no purpose here on earth. It makes you look like an idiot. Let this be the reward of my adversary, David's adversary. Verses 6 on to 20. David had some men that were cursing of his adversary. And of them let 
of them that speak evil against my soul. That would be for David, that would be for Jesus, and that would be for Israel. I will curse them that curse you, God said to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his seed. You want to curse Israel? I'll return the curse right back on you. You want to curse my son? You want to curse my son? Well, where do you think you're going to go? You're going to go to the place of cursing. To be cursed forever. In the place that God made for the devil and his angels. You'll be right at home. Then David takes a complete turn in verse 21. But do not for me. God, don't return the curse upon me. You know, think of my mother. Look to my dad. Look to my family. Look to my children. Look to my wife. Reverse them. O oh God, the Lord, for thy name's sake. Because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. Complete opposite from what the enemy is. That's what Jesus Christ is. He's the complete opposite of man. Man is a sinner. Jesus Christ is sinless. And he came in God's name's sake because Jesus, Jehovah, saved. And upon Israel is the name of Jehovah. And I believe in the revelation, the man with an inkhorn goes about and puts the name of Jehovah upon the 144,000. For I am poor, David says, and needy. Classification of the people in the, in the tribulation period without the mark. And when Jesus came on this earth, he was poor and he's needy. He didn't have a house. He didn't have gold. He didn't have silver. He had a place where he had to lay his head where there was no bed. He was rich, but he yet he became poor for us. I live like Jesus, and they got a house with four walls and a ceiling, and refrigerators full of food, and they can turn on the burners and cook a, a hot meal. Uh, not Jesus. One time he went out of Peter's house, went off to the mountain, and prayed all night. Because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I mean, can you imagine God, Jesus Christ, his heart being wounded? One time, he's in his city, in Mark, and he can't do too many healings because of unbelief. And he marveled. His heart broke that you're the ones who are supposed to believe. And he wept over Jerusalem knowing the fate of Jerusalem. His heart was broken that Jesus wept over a loved one as Lazarus. And he got angry with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. I am gone like the shadow, a sundial, when it declines. Days are fleeing. I am tossed up and down as the locust. Locusts easily move in the wind. When the locusts came to Egypt, the east wind brought them away. My knees are weak through fasting. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. My flesh faileth of fatness. And there was no meat on the bone. Jesus again, verse 25. I became also reproach unto them. When they looked upon me, they shake their heads. And that's Jesus on the cross. Oh, you're really the Messiah? What are you doing up there? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That's why he was up there. And he suffered or died according to the scriptures. That's why he was up there. They're shaking their head like, failure. Absolutely, yeah, you're the one. You failure. You. 
is anything but a failure. Help me, O Lord, my God, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, save me through thy mercy. That they may know that this is thy hand. That thou, Lord, has done it. In three days and three nights, God resurrected him out of the grave. According to the scripture. Let them curse. We already talked about them. They're going to curse. You're going to witness and they're going to curse. But bless thou. When they arise, let them be ashamed. But let thy servant rejoice. Talk about the enemies and talk about those that love God. Let my adversaries be clothed with shame. And they will. They laugh at you for witnessing. God says one day I'll laugh at them. God will get the last laugh. And I can't even imagine what it would sound like to get God to laugh. Let them cover themselves with their own confusion. That's what hell is, confusion. As with a mantle. That's a covering, like a coat. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. How are you doing? Yea, I will praise him among the multitude. Didn't say among the church. Didn't say among the saved. Didn't say among, among the people. That, you know, our God's chosen. Said of the multitude. The multitude followed Jesus. Who was the multitude? Those that believed, those that wanted something, those that hated Jesus. You praise the Lord in the multitude of people, whether how they feel about Jesus or not. Again, that multitude shows about God, Jesus Christ, went through the crowds, went through the multitude, and he lifted up the Father. For he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul. And again, the, the passage about the poor is the tribulation period. You're poor without that mark. And they're going to be the Jewish people. And who's going to stand for the Jewish people? The Lord Jesus Christ. Who's going to get on that horse and come down for which people? The nation of Israel. Who's going to be destroyed? The enemies of the Jews. And the false prophet and the Antichrist are going to be put into the lake of fire. And the devil is going to be locked up for a thousand years. And Jesus Christ will sit king of kings and lord of lords. While Judas is burning in the lake. Best thing is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. God bless.